Hey homies, this is Sarah. And this is Ashley. And this is Hometown Homicide. Yeah, like I was about to say, I definitely fucked that up last week. (laughs) When I was editing, I somehow hit mute on the talking track and then saved and uploaded just a blank track with music. Yeah, Yeah, when I saw the comment, I'm like, oh, shit. Because I was was working. It's broken. I'm like, fuck. (laughs) So I listened on different platforms just to check. I'm like, yeah, there's nothing there. But at least I knew I knew it was a simple thing. Because I'm like, no, it was there, I swear. I'm like, oh, I bet I muted it because I was doing something and then I fucking I forgot to unmute it. So, yeah. my bad, everybody. If you had technical difficulties, it was my fault. But at yeah. least an easy fix. Yep, yep. Easy peasy. Did you think the whole thing was gone? No, I knew it wasn't. Oh, okay. I would have been fucking pissed, but I knew it wasn't. Anyways, um, yeah. spooky. Not spooky. spooky. It was scary. Spooky. It was scary for me. Uh-huh. Um, and I already warned Kara that I would be mentioning her and her boyfriend Matt what they did to me last week. <laughs> so after we got done recording our episode, I was sitting on the couch. Probably not a good idea to be watching paranormal car on tape. All of a sudden, I hear <laughs> down my door. I didn't even have a chance to think what the fuck. I think my heart completely stopped <laughs> because I was, I, I didn't move. I froze and then. <sighs> Motherfucking train. <sighs> Why they gotta be honking? Because my window is open. Anyways, I'm scared. I'm frozen. I finally look out into the hallway. No one's there. I'm shaking. I text Kara and I'm like, hey, are you home? And did you guys fuck with my door? She's like, no. Why? And I'm like, oh my God, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what just happened. She goes, I didn't, but not saying Matt didn't do it either. <laughs> like, oh, thank God. At least I know who did it. Because if you weren't home and that happened, I would have moved out that night. Like, <laughs> probably left everything and just left. Got a hotel. But thankfully, it was Matt fucking around still. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Speaking of train... I am looking to move away from the train. (laughs) Right now, it's very hard to find something to move into that is not either a trap house or super expensive. Yeah. So I looked at a house last night for rent, and it was a huge no. I am now, I've lost all trust in Zillow, (laughs) because pictures are not what they seem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will post pictures from four years ago. Yeah. But I want to move. I want out of here. I have an actual studio to record in. <laughs> so please listen to our podcast so we can make some money and I can move. <laughs> <laughs> Something I didn't text you about so I could tell you about it here. You love to do that. I do. You love doing that I to me. I do. Um, so a case that I am going to cover probably in the next couple months. I have to get things pulled together. A story I want to do the main suspect that had been put on trial for murder and acquitted um fucking died on saturday what he died no shit no shit my mom messaged me and i like i i couldn't i cut a caller i'm like what the fuck and in the paper it said a short illness if he did do it i hope he left some sort of something some note somewhere saying it yeah but if you didn't do it like it's, it just it all just sucks and i was actually just recently thinking about trying to reach out to him too just to see if he would want to talk about his uh, events Side. of the night yeah like according to him yeah what what went on that night and the party and everything else but can't do that now oh the kristen smart they're gonna start trial on oh really What's i hadn't heard that face so I was trying to, I was recommending uh, Your Own Backyard to my cousin, because I that was a great podcast, and it was about Kristen Smart, and they, Paul Flores, they arrested him, and I believe his dad, because they had evidence, and the judge 
said there was enough evidence to go on with the trial and they're looking at moving it like 100 miles away mm. because of they want a fair the, trial. Yeah. yeah. I feel like no matter, like, I'm in Iowa. I know yeah, about that. that. That's, I mean, it's it doesn't, be harder to do. Amber Heard shat in Johnny Depp's bed is revenge for the Yorkies shitting on the bed or something like that. She's a twat. She's a twat. Like, that would almost kind of really be a funny prank if there wasn't all this other domestic abuse abuse and crazy shit. I was following that for a while, and then, like, I hadn't heard anything, and then everybody is talking about it on Facebook. I'm like, where have you guys been? (laughs) Like, this has been happening for a while. Anyways, anything else? Anything else we should talk about? Hey, I, I got the stuff sent out to Tracy. Oh, good Thank job. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, I finally remembered to fucking go to the post office. Oh, also, um, have not heard back from our winner of the YouTube contest. Ah, yes. Uh, exactly. Lynette, if you are out there, if you do see our messages and hear this, like, we hope everything is okay. Um, a little worried that we haven't heard from you. Maybe you're just busy with work and whatnot, but I Which hope... Which is understandable. Totally okay. Just, we we'll hope you're sure okay. You're, yeah. Because we haven't heard from you. So, to be fair, it's been a few weeks. We are going to redraw. I have to re completely do the wheel <laughs> because I got a new laptop this week, but Yay. my wheel was on my other laptop that I can't get into. So, look for that in the next week ish. I'll try to do it tomorrow. We mentioned a f- good month or so ago, we were asked to help somebody else with their oh yes yes and they uh, got some uh like opening script lines to us the other day so yeah we'll be letting you know what podcast that is where to listen to it um because it sounds it's it's gonna be a good one Mm -hmm. and it's covering a case that i did at the beginning of this journey yeah and now we're gonna be on episode 21 21 already wow Time flies. 21's my number. Should have traded. <laughs> oh well. Ding! So today, I was going to do a few missing persons cases. Like, I was going to try to go off what Sarah did with, like, bizarre news, but this was going to be, like, really strange cases of missing people. Mm. And then I found one that I really liked, and then it got longer than I expected to do more than one. But this is the disappearance of Tara Calico. Tara Lee Calico. She was born February 28th, 1969 in New Mexico. On September 20th, 1988, at around 9.30 a.m., 19-year-old Tara went out for her daily two-hour bike ride, but this time alone. Okay. I knew the name. I couldn't remember the deal but yes go on her route went along new mexico state road 47 it was the same every day her mother patty dole knew it well because a pair of them often traveled it together lately though patty had been skipping rides tara had become nervous and less inclined to take this route after a recent incident in which a car drove aggressively close to her deliberately passing her multiple times However, Tara continued the tradition, even refusing her mother's suggestion that she carry mace. It was the same sunny stretch she had been riding for years and nothing ever happened there. Mm. So she didn't need it. As she headed out the door, Tara jokingly told her mom that she'd better come looking for her if she was at home by noon because she had a tennis date with her boyfriend, Jack Cole, at 1230. And she was determined to keep that. Mm -hmm. But noon came and went. And Tara never came home. Her mom went searching for her along Tara's usual bike route but could not find her. And then she eventually contacted the police. Hours later, officers found her Walkman, headphones, and her cassette of Boston along the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Tara and her bike were nowhere to be found. And apparently the entire community was out searching for her nonstop. Her mom believed that she might have dropped them in an an attempt to mark her trail. A few people recalled seeing Tara along the road, and one or two remembered a light-colored truck 
possibly a 1953 Ford, with a camper shell they thought might have been riding along with Tara, but no one actually saw her being abducted, Mm -hmm. if that's what happened. Police suspected that the 19-year-old had run away. They always, they always think they run away. Uh Uh-huh. Ooh. I have, uh, whoa, oh. whoa. Oh, she's possessed, folks. <laughs> uh, shut up. <laughs> this, they suspected that the 19-year-old had run away from home, a hypothesis her family denied, describing Tara as a cheerful girl brimming with enthusiasm. There was just so much she wanted to fit into a day. She was like a machine. It was amazing, said a heartbroken John Dole, Tara's stepfather. Tara's family waited and waited, and waited. But no further evidence was forthcoming. Tara Colico had simply vanished. Then on June 15th, 1989, nearly nine months after Tara's disappearance, a mysterious Polaroid picture was discovered in a convenient store parking lot in Port St. Joe, Florida, nearly 1,500 miles from where Tara had disappeared. So the eerie photo showed a teenage girl and a young boy lying on sheets and a pillow. Both have duct tape over their mouths and appear to be bound. The woman who found the photo said that it was in a parking space where a white windowless Toyota cargo van had been parked when she arrived at the store. She said that the van was being driven by a man with a mustache who appeared to be in his 30s. Police set up roadblocks to intercept the vehicle, but the man has never been identified. According to Polaroid officials, because that is a thing... The picture had to have been taken after May 1989 because the particular film used in the photograph was uh, was not available until then. Mm. As the Polaroid gained national attention when it was shown on the television program America's Most Wanted, friends who turned into the show called Patty, telling her to look at the Polaroid. Was it Tara? Mm. When Patty first saw the photo, she wasn't sure if it actually was Tara. Mm-hmm. I said Tara. I meant Tara. But the more she looked at it, the more she thought it was. The girl in the photo had a discolored streak on her thigh, a scar just like the one Tara had gotten in a car accident when she was younger. And then there was a dog-eared paperback next to her, Sweet Adriana, by V.C. Andrews, which was one of Tara's favorite authors. And her mom had described, like, that is Tara. Like, the way she's she's mad in this photo. Mm. And the more she looked at it, she was convinced. She was a little older, without makeup. Tara was looking back at her from this Polaroid. Mm. But the authorities weren't as certain, as certain that it was Tara. But she's like, that's what she looked like when she was mad. Mm. Experts at the Los Alamos National Laboratory doubted it was her. And the FBI was unable to offer conclusive evidence either way. Hmm. Scotland Yard in the UK, however, took a crack at the photo and concluded the girl was indeed Tara Calico. What all parties agreed on was that the photograph had been taken recently. Hmm. The Polaroid could not have been taken later than May of that year. But beyond that, the authorities had nothing. So the little boy in the photo they believed was a nine-year-old named Michael Henley. So this got a little bit more muddy, as I say, when the family of Michael Henley came forward to identify him. Michael had vanished in New Mexico in April 1988 Mm -hmm. while they were on a hunting trip. And for a time, both families waited anxiously for news. But in the end, only one family received answers. In 1990, Michael Henley's remains were discovered in New Mexico's Zuni Mountains, just seven miles from the campsite where he disappeared. He had died of exposure long before that Polaroid had been developed. After enduring dozens of tips and appearing on countless shows, Oprah, Unsolved Mysteries, 48 hours, and a current affair. Begging for news for their daughter, the case remained cold, and the Doles made the decision and moved 2,000 miles from their home in New Mexico to Florida. 
Here, said Patty Dole, of their home in New Mexico, there's n not anything I can do that doesn't remind me of Tara. Yeah. A new development emerged in 2008 when Sheriff Riviera of Valencia County, New Mexico, said he knew what happened to Tara and who did it. He didn't name the suspects, but said they were two men, teenagers at the time of the disappearance, who were following Tara on her bike when they had accidentally hit her with their truck, panicked, and killed her. In that panic, they disposed of her body. But without remains, Riviera... But without remains... Jesus, fuck you. Seriously. <laughs> Time out train! Time out train! Dude, one of these times we should fucking... Flip them off? No, I was gonna say take a shot every time we have to stop. <laughs> I'll be hammered. <sighs> but without remains, Riviera said he couldn't make an arrest. John Dole was angered when he learned of Riviera's claims. He said that there was no reason for the sheriff to publicly announce his suspicions if he couldn't arrest the suspects. Yeah, that sucks. Two other Polaroid photographs that could have been Tara have surfaced over the years. One was a blurry photo of a girl's face with tape covering her mouth, found near a residential construction site in Mon Montecito, California. Forensic evidence suggests it was taken sometime after May of 1989. The second was a woman loosely bound with her eyes covered, sitting next to a man on an Amtrak train, dated roughly to February of 1990. No charges were ever brought as a result of the, either image. Patty, her mom, found the Montecito image compelling and believed it to be Tara. She didn't, however, believe the girl on the train was her daughter, though. Hmm. Today, Tara... Calico has been missing for more than 30 years. Her disappearance remains one of the most haunting cold cases in recent memory. And at this point, it seems that only chance will turn up answers. On October 1st, 2019, the FBI announced that they are offering a reward up to $20,000 for precise details hmm. leading to the identification or location of Tara Lee Calico and information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for her disappearance. Hmm. In September 2021, the Valencia County Sheriff's Office and the New Mexico State Police issued a statement that they have a new lead in the case huh. and that the focus of a sealed warrant for an unknown private residence located within Valencia County has been issued. However, no further details were provided. I hadn't heard that yet. The missing person flyer from the FBI mm. have her photos and then what she would possibly look like at the age of 49. Tara was last seen riding a neon pink, I was going to say fluffy. Fluffy. Oh, fl a neon pink fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fluffy I could die. <laughs> Just watched that the other day. <laughs> oh, it's so good. While I was working. Background noise. Oh, yeah. Tara was last seen riding a neon pink Huffy mountain bike with yellow control cables and sidewalls. She was wearing a white t-shirt with First National Bank of Berlin on it, size medium, white shorts with green stripes, white ankle socks, and white and turquoise Avia tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Tara was also wearing a gold butterfly ring with a diamond insert, a gold amethyst ring, and half-inch gold hoop earrings. Tara left her home on Brug Street in Berlin, New Mexico to go on a bike ride at 9.30 a.m. on September 20th, 1988. She rode her mother's bicycle as her own was damaged. She kept getting flat tires, so she almost didn't go because she was afraid she was going to get one, just FYI. She was last seen riding along Highway 47 in Valencia County at approximately 11.45 a.m. Tara biked this route daily during her routine 36-mile ride. If you have any information concerning this person, please contact your local FBI office or the nearest American embassy or consulate. Also, I did find a podcast. If you want to dive deeper into this investigation, there is a podcast mm. called Vanished. 
It is one of her friends that personally knew Tara mm-hmm. and her family and wanted more answers. So she does have a podcast. There are 30. Oh, wow. Five episodes. Wow. The last one was October 1st, 2019. It was an update, but I started listening to it. So if you really want more information, definitely check out Vanished. Excellent. It's Vanished the Tara Calico Investigation Hmm. by Mundo Maravilla. So anyways, Hmm. um, I was going to actually do another missing person, but I did run out of time. My bad. I always feel like mine are short. I don't... I mean, uh, sometimes. It just kind of depends. I always find ones that... That's the information. Like, I've searched multiple places. Mm -hmm. Especially an older story. I just... I was really caught with this one when it was like... When she was like, oh, if I'm not home by noon, come look for me. And then she didn't show back up. And it's like, what? Yeah. And the photograph... Yeah, the, the photo is really weird. And again, I've said this before. If you like what you hear, please make sure you give us a rating on Apple, Spotify, and Good Pods. Yes, please. It is greatly appreciated. It does help us grow. Yeah. And we, we have seen a spike in, in listening. So thank you yeah. for people. If you're going in the back catalog, uh, just beware. Um, we had some issues <laughs> with sound. Yes. Please We've apologized for it yeah. multiple times because we were new. We didn't know what we were doing. And, um, yeah, there, there was issues and, like, ghosts and shit. But but um, we moved on. Power through it. Just power through it like we did. And then you get to... The, the content is, is still good. So, you know. Facebook. YouTube. Patreon. Instagram. Oh. Whoop. Oh. 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 Ha! Speaking of... Oh. Uh... The you bet or no, Manitowoc Minute guy. He put out a video which I need to look up. Um, it was something about the the not nice Midwesterner or something like that, or like when the Midwesterner's mad at you or something, something to that effect. And I guess he was like, "Don't tell your folks I said hi." <laughs> <laughs> don't I tell your folks I said hi. I'm like excellent. Yeah, but, yeah. Don't don't tell them I said hi. That's funny. Huh. But yes, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Hometown Homicide Podcast, Patreon slash Hometown Homicide Podcast. Email podcast at hometownhomicide.com. You can definitely send us. Send us stories, feedback. Whatever. Random, Tweet us. Random joke. I would take a joke. We could do like a daily joke. Fuck, I don't care. Whatever. Or tips on other bizarre news for whenever the second installment of that will be. We just like to con- like yeah. connect with Maybe. you guys. What's like up? You guys are listening and you guys keep us motivated to keep doing this because yeah. if no one listened, I wouldn't keep doing it, to be honest. Right, we'll talk to the wall. Twitter at Ope Murder. Before the train pisses off, pisses us, 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 us off again. Remember, we want to tell stories to you, not about you, so stay safe. And this was Hometown Homicide.